Welcome to part two of the AIM analysis video series designed for drivers who enter races with high car counts. In the first video we set up a view that breaks the track into manageable sectors for analysis and a measures view that looks into simple acceleration, deceleration and vehicle speed. In this video we'll look at a few tips and tricks for analyzing that data and identifying meaningful insights that will help a driver find possible improvements in their lap times. As most races with high car counts are endurance races, such as a chump car race, the only variable in lap time should be the driver, unless of course track or car conditions have changed considerably. This analysis will help remove any argument about traffic affecting a driver lap time and give a true depiction of performance on track. Okay, analysis number one is the simplest of all and it is the one that gives a true depiction over a driver's session how well they did on track. And so I'm going to reopen up the software, had it open from the last time we were there. All of these sectors, as you remember from the video, correlate with sectors that are on the track to get a split time review or analysis, and we're going to open those up. So as we identified earlier, no one single lap um, for Jeff uh, had his overall fastest sector time in it. But interestingly, because we're only looking at six sectors, if we added all of his six fastest together, what would his lap time have been? And so you can see in this chart that if we looked at it, even though because of traffic and busyness on track, his fastest on-track performance was a 2 minute 22.7. If we'd taken Jeff's fastest times overall, his actual fastest lap time would have been a 2 minute 20.8. Now in many instances a theoretical best lap time oftentimes breaks the track down into multiple, just like we saw earlier on with AIM, 15 or so uh, different sections of the track, which is almost impossible to be able to remember and get those done right every time. But what we've done here is we've broken it down into just six simple sectors that gives a true depiction of what the time might have been. And because it was so busy on track with so many cars, in this instance, Jeff is already two seconds faster a lap if he aggregated together all of his best sector times for the session that he ran. So this is the first way of being able to get a real true idea of how well a driver is doing when there's just endless traffic on track. The next analysis we're going to do is going to be look at comparing driver to driver in each of those segments that we just identified. And so here, across the top, instead of selecting Jeff or myself, what I've clicked is Test Compare. Then I'm going to open these up, and what it's going to do is instead of showing all six of the fastest sectors by each of the drivers, what it's going to do, using this little red indicator, is actually going to show which driver was fastest in which sector. And so you can see here that uh, the three sectors that I was fastest in are sectors 3, 4, and 5, which correlate here on the track to three, four, and five here, which is the boot part of Watkins Glen. If I scroll down and find Jeff's times, you can see that he was fastest in sector one, sector two, and sector six, which is basically everywhere else but the boot. So interestingly, we're finding very different times uh, in different parts of the track. And so that's where you know we could immediately start having a conversation and being able to say, what are you doing? What are you finding? How's the car? How did you feel you really go through that part of the track? And just start learning from each other. But what we can also do is we can start seeing what that actually translates to on track in relation to inputs from the driver or as well as we can get inputs from the driver on the AIM solo. So what we can do is we can go back to the measures graph and we can hit the space bar and we can say, OK, let's find the lap times using this where that speed has been gained. And so what I've done is I've actually found using this split report here that um, Jeff's fastest lap time uh, through section three, and I'm using three because there's a big delta between the two, is, as I know, a 14.1 as I've analyzed his data a little bit, and that's on lap 28. Whereas I'm actually doing a 13.6 through there. So it's about a half a second difference between the two drivers just in this small section of track here. So let's examine why that is. So we're going to go back to the measures graph. And for Jeff at the top here, we've got uh, lap 28 uh, identified. Interestingly, we'd never look at this in terms of a fastest lap time because it's a 2 minute 24.3, uh, which is uh, a second and a half to nearly two seconds slower than Jeff's fastest. So we probably wouldn't have looked at it without doing this in-depth analysis. And then if we go to my lap time as well, we've selected lap 20, which was my fastest through that section. And you can now see on the chart what information we can gather and so we're looking at section number three and we can see that at sector three you can start seeing that whereas the blue and the red line are together at this point doing an almost identical lap time through the track um, at this point the blue line starts to distance itself from the red line showing it's slower on this particular lap 
through this section. And so what we should do is we should do zoom in and have a look. So I'm going to hit the space bar, uh, which gets uh, just a little bit more screwed real estate. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click up here to the plus button. And I'm just going to highlight section number three like this. And you can do that just by dragging it and holding your mouse down. This will zoom on, on this particular area of track. And I'm just going to move the map over here. And now we can start having a look at the activity of the drivers through that particular corner. So you can see here that on entry, uh, the red line, which is me, is actually slowing sooner uh, than the blue line from Jeff. And in, uh, the other variable here is that the slope of the deceleration is a little bit sharper than the deceleration that is happening here with Jeff. So what I'm doing here, it looks like, is I'm slowing the car more aggressively, getting it, uh, getting it slowed to the speed that I want, getting the car turned, and then you can see that I start increasing my acceleration here at this point on the track, whereas Jeff waits longer to be able to get on the accelerator because he's charged into the corner a little bit harder than I am, and it means that it's harder for him to get on the accelerator. So this might be a case of uh, fast in and slow out, which is worth a conversation uh, to be able to have with Jeff as we look at that particular corner. So here's one thing to be able to have a look at, to have a conversation, to be able to say, maybe braking a little bit harder, a little bit sooner, and getting the car turned and then getting on the accelerator might be a good option. The second thing to have a look at is this button up here called the GPS. And if you click on that, it'll take you to the particular point on the track where the two cars are actually coming into the corner. And you can see here, as I click on it, you can see the cars entering the corner um, based upon what variables we're looking at. And so while the GPS isn't always the most accurate thing to look at, one of the things that is interesting to note is that because I'm braking sooner, I may be able to get the car turned sooner, which you can see I start to turn into the corner, which correlates to this corner here, and I can get on the accelerator and carry the car on the way out, accelerating the whole time and being able to give me that time advantage. Whereas Jeff may have actually taken a little bit too much speed in, which prevents him from being able to turn. So his line is a little bit shallower, preventing him from being able to get on the accelerator sooner coming out. So it could be a line thing as well to be able to have the conversation with as well. So just a simple first step looking at some analysis broken down into sectors that ordinarily these two laps, neither of us would have had a look at because neither of them are our fastest lap on track. Right, the last piece of analysis we're going to look at in this video is going to be consistency of the driver through the corners as well. So one of the challenges is, is that uh, despite it being the fastest uh, through that particular section, is that a one-off? Was there a car maybe involved, but it didn't show on the data because it was a very communal pass and both drivers didn't slow each other down, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we want to be able to look at, is there consistency in how the drivers are doing? So what I've done is I've stayed on the test compare of the split report and I've scrolled down and I have said, okay, let's find all of the consistent laps uh, that have seen Jeff go quickly through there. So I click on Jeff's lap time and I notice that even though his fastest was lap 28, we also see a 14.1 at 27. We see one here at lap 20. Um, we see another 14.2 here. So what I've done is I've gone in and I've ticked Jeff's five fastest. And to make sure this consistency, maybe I did something right just once and it was a fluke and it wasn't necessarily something that could be repeated. I've done the same thing, scrolling over to the left here and selecting my fastest lap. So as you go through, you can see I've selected 12, lap 14, 15, 20 and 23. All areas where I've seen 13.6, 13.7 in terms of speed through section number three. Now, going back to the measures graph, um, it's got really ugly. It's very difficult to see information and it's not necessarily telling us anything. What we're looking for here is we're looking for consistency between the two drivers and the closer their lines are here, the more consistency there is in their driving. So what we're actually going to do is we're actually just going to color these. And the fun part of it is, is that you can color these as you wish. So you can just go in and color the laps here and make it so that they are um, all the same color for each of the drivers and see then if there is consistency in how the driving has happened. So I'm going to make all of mine red, and I'm probably going to make all of Jeff's gray, so one color is a nice contrast against the other. So as I quickly do this, we can see if there's any consistency through that sector uh, three to be able to see if we can see if it's a one-off or if there's consistency from the drivers. So as I do this exercise, you can see that it's getting easier already to read the chart that is here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to scroll over to the left. We're going to hit the space bar and we're actually going to look at sector three. And we can see that there is consistency through there. But just to be sure, we're going to take the plus button again. 
we're going to zoom in on sector, 30, uh, sector 3 here and uh, we're just going to see what that actually proves and we can see that that information is consistent nearly every time that's going in with the exception of a, of a lap or two uh, the red lines are slowing um, and the uh, gray lines which is now Jeff are actually slowing later all are consistently going in further deeper into the corner and you can see that it overslows the car and it prevents that speed from being carried out of the corner so this is showing that there's consistency there which means that if the driver is confronted with this data it wasn't a, oh well that was a one-off it's a it's a consistency that's going through the fastest lap times which allows you to be able to work on that together and be able to find opportunities of being able to try something different or do something different in that particular corner thank you very much for watching this video I think you can see now that if you're at a racetrack with a very high car count uh, it is sometimes very difficult to do fast lap versus fast lap comparison but if you break the track down into manageable segments you start looking at consistency through the fastest laps and you start analyzing the data you can find ways of being able to improve driver over driver uh, despite the fact that there's always a lot of traffic on track and so I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions please feel free to ask uh, directly emailing me through the website uh, or in the comment section below so thank you very much indeed